Welcome to the Adapt Podcast, a podcast for executive leaders looking to be successful in the digital age. Get practical tips from successful leaders and listen as digital movers and shakers talk about how they transformed companies into the digital era. Here is your host, Luis Gonzalves. Welcome to another episode of the Adapt Podcast. Today, I have Fernanda Vasconcelos, and today is the number 13. Fernanda, you are the lucky one, because I hope the 13 means a great, fantastic show. And I think I could not be happier to have uh, someone here like Fernanda. Fernanda is a really, really good friend of mine. We've been discussing business for several years. We have been discussing nice, interesting topics about food, about startups. And today, Fernanda comes to our show as a co-founder of Nolita. So, Fernanda, thank you so much and welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to, to have you here. And I'm really, really happy to talk about you and talk about Nolita and talk about e-commerce in, in, in this show. Welcome, Fernanda. Oh, thank you so much, Luis, for the invitation. I am really, really happy to be here. Thanks. So, Fernanda, tell me or tell us a little bit about yourself. So it's always nice when we start a show, we always describe a little bit or we give a little bit of um, background from, from the person, the, from the guest, so that people know with whom are we talking. So it would be interesting if you could really give a, a brief uh, overview of your, of your career so that people understand who is Fernanda. Go for it. Okay, of course. So I, I worked in the digital for more than two decades in business, marketing, and uh, also IT teams. Uh, and my, my first digital project was um, a website that I launched in 2001. It was a, a personal project. And uh, it was really crazy because one year later, I sold it to José de Mello Group. Uh, so it, it, it was a, a really funny uh, project. And uh, since then, uh, I created and launched several digital assets for different companies like Optimus, a mobile operator, and also Continent, the major food retailer in Portugal. Uh, I also have been part of the team that manage Continent's e-commerce website. So I really love uh, digital. It's my, my biggest crush. Uh, but four years ago, I fell in love with uh, healthy food. So in the beginning, uh, this new crush was just impacting my personal life. Uh, it was a personal choice. But then I realized that the market was lacking in delicious food that also is healthy uh, because I think you don't have to compromise. You can have both. So I decided to combine my two passions and create a business where both digital and healthy food could be my daily priority. So it's, uh, it's, the, the main reason why I created Nolita, uh, this new brand that sells mainly online and provides healthy, delicious products for healthy, for breakfast and snacks. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's really, really, I'm really excited to talk about Nolita here because I, I, I have a special passion about the business and I, I really want to discuss how uh, a business that sells food uh, is is driving and conquer the world without having one single, uh, at least owning a, a physical shop. And that's very interesting. And I really want to, to talk about it. But Fernanda, now I would like to, to ask you always the same question to, to, to begin. And we have been discussing this in, in, in our private discussion. So of course, I, I, I know you're your ideas and in your opinion, but I would love to, sh to get your opinion into our audience minds. And, and for that, I would love to ask you, what is digital transformation for you? Because you have been working in the corporate world for many years now as a owner, a startup owner. Um, I'm pretty sure you have your own definition and it's always very interesting to, to hear what people have to say. So I really would love to get your own definition of what is digital transformation. 
So I am kind of a dinosaur of the digital age. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw different stages happening, but um, the basic and the, the most common approach is to have something in digital. So, for instance, uh, many people think that wow, I have a website, I'm in the digital world, I will conquer the digital world, or I have a mobile app. Um, some people think that being active on social networks is enough. And for many years, it was enough and for many companies. But most, more recently, we began to see new brands that are born digital with the uh, business models that are completely different and that really take advantage of the unique capabilities of digital. I, I think the most used example is Uber, but uh, we can think about other companies uh, like that. Um, and we also began to talk about digital transformation for established companies meaning they should rethink their business, find new business streams to take advantage of digital. I think the, the main problem is that for a number of people, only the first approach exists. So they end up with digital assets. They don't know how to monetize. Um, for me, the true digital age is being built by people who have uh, digital DNA that meaning that they know how to use the different tools to create and manage a business and also how to fully take advantage of digital unique assets. So they, they don't just do in digital the same things that they do in the physical world. No, they create new business streams that use these unique assets that digital give them. Uh, I think this this is the true digital age. I think this is very interesting what you said because I, I see so many companies so here, for example, in Portugal, right? D during the pandemic, uh, or all over the world during the pandemic, companies were forced or people were forced to work from home. But uh, that was very interesting. I even wrote an article in Portugal because it was really pissing me off. So many companies saying, oh, we are now digital. We are digital. Everyone in our company is working <laughs> from home. And I was just, um, just wanted to bash my my head against the wall because it, it's 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 really so bad how people understand what digital era digital transformation is right what they were doing basically of course it's a it's a next step uh, uh, to work from home but the business model does not change the revenue their operative model does not change nothing changed it was just the way how people were working that that changed right and the same the same with some local newspapers that they are very convinced that we are now very digital because we don't sell newspapers. We <laughs> we have a website, but uh, the business model continues exactly the same, which is selling uh, uh, advertising. Right? This is the the main the main business model of a newspaper, for example, was um, selling ads, placement ads. Right? So they were charging for for ads to for you to put to buy space on on their newspapers and nowadays they don't sell the space on the newspapers but they sell the space on the on the on the website but the problem is they are competing with facebook and they are competing with google and they are competing with so many other players and they don't realize that actually their business model is completely outdated so thank you i think i think that was a very very interesting uh, example right that people believe they 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 do exactly the same thing that they were doing before, but uh, using different channels. I would say different different ways of working. But the the, the business model is the change. It's 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 the same. And, and, and I, I love your definition on touching on the business model. I love the definition of of touching in the different revenue streams, and and incorporate that in in your new new way of of, of operating the company. Let's say. Good. So we started. We started to talk a little bit about this. But uh, uh, you work in the in the big retail company here in Portugal for for some years. Um, tell us from your point of view. So you said Continent, and for people that don't know, Continent is it belongs to to the biggest uh, or one of the biggest groups in Portugal, and it's the biggest retail company in in Portugal. So it's a massive company, and that's why I want to 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 get it 
to 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 get to our audience because I wanted to get his their example or or at least companies at that size. From your point of view, how these companies that are so big can take advantage of digital age? So it's not always a, a bad thing to be a big company. It has a lot of advantage. So how this, do you see big companies, more traditional but bigger companies, um, can take advantage of this digital age from your point of view? Uh, I think they can uh, create meaningful experiences uh, combining both physical and online presence. Uh, so having an e-commerce store is the most obvious step, uh, but they need to understand how they can interact, engage, convert and retain customers. And this is very, very, very different in, in the digital world. Um, they also need to understand how to use content uh, to strengthen their positioning and generate traffic or to, to use social networks to create awareness and engage. Um, so they know their business like no one else, so they can use all the legacy they have built to strengthen their digital strategy. Um, and the, the, the the multi-channel uh, experience are really interesting. Um, so the, the, the biggest opportunities is um, to use what they already have and boost the experience with all the digital capabilities uh, that, that they, they also can have. That's actually, that, that, that's actually really, really cool. I never, I never thought about it. So now I'm, I was listening to you and it's actually very interesting because they, they have huge potential, right? So they, they have the physical stores where most of the people still need to go. If you, if you buy fresh fish, most probably will not order, at least not in the next couple of years, people still want to see the fish or the, or the fresh food. So people need, still need to go there. But they have the online part as well. They have the whole social media. So they, they actually can create a hugely interesting experience for, for the customers, combining the offline with the online experience, something that small business like yours still not, are not in the position to, to do because they cannot afford it. It's not big enough. Right. But, right. um, but, but, it, but it's, it's, it's a huge advantage. Um, but so uh, now I want to, enter into, into a new interesting conversation so or question. So why do you think these these companies, like these big retail companies, they have so much money, they have a huge market share, they have customer data, they, they have everything, right? They could have everything to create this fantastic, tremendous experience, uh, multi-channel experience for customers. So what is preventing it? Why, why from your point of view, why they, they are not doing it? Or at least not in the proper way? I think the main problem is that they want to do the same thing that they were doing in the physical world, in the digital world, and it doesn't work. <laughs> um, so we are coming back to the first question, right? So yes. basically, they believe that it's just a way. <laughs> it's just a way to change the cha distribution channel, and they do exactly the same stuff. Exactly. I think this is the main problem because. Uh, when you go to, to a, a retail store, you have a lot of promotions, you have, um, you, you, you have a lot of things that are difficult in, in, in digital. For instance, you have a lot of products. So if you have an e-commerce store with a lot of products, you have to have filters, you have to, to have tags in your products. You have to have an experience that is easy. It should be easy to, to find new products, to, to discover the products that uh, I already buy. But usually it's not easy. It's really yeah, difficult. Because what, what you are saying, it's interesting because now I was listening, I was thinking, mo maybe most of the people don't realize, but when you go to a really supermarket, the way how the products are displayed are very strategically displayed yes so they are not just randomly distributed they know 
exactly what that kind of products sell the most and they know exactly where they should put the products. They know exactly when you go out, you put some shrimp gums, etc. So to do some small upselling or some magazines, some really easy, easy, no brain decision, very easy buying decision. So products that you can buy it in a very easy way. And actually when you combine all, if you go to the online business, exactly as you said, you need to have some way, or at least the way how you organize your store in the online business, online world is a completely different way. But uh, for them, most probably they just really think, okay, let's pick up all the, the products, let's put on an online store and, and let's change the channel. And we save a lot of money because we don't have the, the physical space. But um, that I never thought about it. Actually, the the, the experience is is really really different from the online world and for, for the from the online world to the physical world. And mm -hmm. um, but that that's just a little bit of a mindset. Do you, do you see other problems that why companies do not change um, and and they do not take advantage of these? big advantage they have and but they, they they simply do not do it what is your what is your take on that i think uh, there's a lack of know-how also so they don't know really what to do in digital and um, sometimes they are motivated in the beginning and they try to do several things but the, the results are not uh, um, quick. So, if so, some people talk about digital as if it was uh, a gold mine and it's really easy. If you find it, you will get rich in two or three days. And it's not like that. Uh, it's, it's difficult. You have to test, you have to spend a lot of money. And, and some companies are not prepared to do that. They they try to do some things and the results don't appear. So the motivation goes away. And uh, um, a lot of times I, I see the companies really motivated in the, the, the lunch moment. But then uh, when, when the, the digital asset is running and, and uh, working, they don't uh, engage with customers. They don't uh, try to to get more traffic. Uh, they think they have done their job just by having an e-commerce website. But it's really different because in in the the physical world, you open a store, you have your your products inside the store, and the customers will go there. They will see the store. They will go inside the store. They will buy. But in the digital, it, it's really different. It doesn't happen like that. So uh, you, you have to 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 nurture your store, and uh, results won't happen uh, in two or three days. And sometimes um, they 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 lose their motivation. Yeah. And, and, and I think another thing, and I think another thing is is like as you said, the way of operating is completely different, and a lot of the people are not ready to to do the small experiments that you were saying. It's not, mm -hmm. it's it's not a, a silver bullet, right? You 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 put a shop up and running. You need to figure out what it works, what does not work. But usually, most of the people that are in charge to to run up this kind of business, they are people that were very successful in the previous traditional business. And because they did something very good in the traditional business, they are nominated to go to the new business. And ta -da, just because you did great in traditional, most probably you will not do great on the digital. And, um, and, and, and I think that that might be a problem. And being myself, having a lot of assets in the digital world, it took me years until I figured out what what people want, what people don't want, what is useful, what is not useful. And I'm very small business, so in, in a huge e-commerce store, it it's it, it's much more, it's harder, much much harder. So I couldn't agree more. And if I can add something, I think also uh, the 
leading digital teams is very different than leading uh, other kind of, of people. And sometimes traditional leaders are not prepared to, to let people experiment, like you said, but also to let them do things in, in the different way. Um, so this, this, uh, brings, um, cultural problems because, um, working on digital is a lot about, uh, testing, about prototyping, things are not always perfect. Um, it's a con continuous experiment. It's a continuous exactly. experimentation. So it's, um, and as you said, I think in the, in the normal supermarket, in the physical supermarket, there's no variables, right? Everything, it works like it was working 20, 30 years ago. It's done. It's, it, it's they, they, they figured it out. They found out how it works and they build new stores like that. But in the digital, we are still so far away from really figuring out how the hell the customer behaves in the shop, how the hell customers behaves in the, in the, in the, in the digital world. Right. So it's, um, it's, it's very, 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 very difficult. And you touch, I think you touched on the really interesting point, the, uh, uh managing, uh, 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 people of young software developers, uh, young of young product developers that are trying to figure out and creating a complete new business model. And, and being and managing those those guys in the same way as the traditional business most probably will will be very hard. I think you you were in this in this situation, but but I wanted to ask you. The answer is is more or less straightforward. But but uh, traditional business and we we can focus on the retail in this episode because this is where your experience relies on. But how do you see? big companies um transformation to this digital era because at the end of the day you are too small to compete with with big big companies but at the end we don't know where you'll be in five ten years and now imagine that uh, we have 1000 milliliters all over the place um how how do you see the risk of these big companies to to not really adapt do you think that they have a a, a, a very or such a powerful brand that they should not care or they don't take any risk or how, how do you see it? So I, I'm very interested on your point of view because you were in both sides. So I would love to know your opinion on, on, on that topic. Do you want a guide to ensure you will not become irrelevant in the digital era? Download the Amazon bestseller book, Adapt. Adaptmethodology.com slash book. I think they, they, they have a, a huge asset, uh, that is the, their, their physical stores and um, the physical experience will always be important even for generations that are uh, born digital like uh, Zen, Zen G. So, so, so uh, this, these assets, nobody will uh, take them. Uh, oh, yeah. And it, it, they are very important, but I think they they will be forced to to merge with the pure digital companies, and they they will be forced to uh, to join companies that have the other assets, the the, the digital ones, and uh, and this this blend will be for sure successful because they they are going to have the best of both worlds. So I think this is the future of these of these retailers. Cool. So so now I'll take I will I will pick up what what you are saying and 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 jump into to to more into Nolita, um, and and how you would see the future of 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 e-commerce. Um, so if you a small introduction question, if you would have and there are so many leaders listen to this podcast, if you would have a, a, a blank check. And you would be into in charge of changing a, a old retail company. How how would you where would you start? So, for as an advice for leaders in this episode, uh, how would you start? So you have the the assets, the physical store. You have a white blank check. What would you do? What would be the steps that leaders can take from 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 you? What what are your 
advices? Uh, my advice is that um, they buy several startups. Uh, they don't try to blend the culture because uh, it will not be possible. So they will have to keep the the starters the startups apart, so they can continue to be themselves and work with their own mindsets and their own KPIs. And I, I think it's the best way to 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 be present on digital and to to take advantage of digital. Uh, I won't recommend having their own teams because people who already work at a, digi uh, a traditional retailer um, they have the men's mindset of the traditional retailers, so they they won't be able to to have very different results with the same people. They need very different people with uh, a different mindset, a different background. It's interesting. And so what you are perhaps, saying. So what you are saying is basically keep the traditional business up and running, optimize your traditional business, but make sure that you invest in the portfolio of new startups or start your own startups or buy e-commerce stores that you see that they have good good future and, and let them develop by themselves. But at some point, try to, as you said in the beginning of the, the, the episode, try to unite both worlds to provide the end-to-end -end experience to the customer. This is what you... Yes, exactly. Exactly. But don't try to fix the startups with your own recipes. Otherwise, <laughs> you will end up with the same problems. <laughs> Actually, that's a very interesting point because I see so many so many big companies that they understand they cannot change. So they, they sponsor their own startups, but then they impose their traditional culture in the new startups and then they, mm -hmm. they screw it up, right? So they, they, they are trying to build a startup. They have the right ideas, the right products, but then the culture comes and smash the, 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 the more hierarchical traditional culture will smash the, the youngest innovative culture. That's actually a pretty good, a pretty good advice. So if you start a startup or if you buy, don't, don't try to impose the culture because th this is actually what what uh, what will happen and actually i had this experience so i was working in, in in sap some years ago they acquired the company where i was working so i was working in a, a most startup super innovative that's why the sap came and bought us and one year later most of the people left because sap basically just yeah. imposed their old waterfall world way of working and basically most of the innovative young people just left because they could not stand so that's actually a, a pretty damn good example so let's let's focus a little bit on 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 nolita and and, and about fernand and about the e-commerce I'm, I'm i'm very excited to 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 talk about it because for me even this week i i i, I went out with a friend and she she ramp up a, a, a shop for, for babies, for mamas, and suddenly her business explode during the pandemic. And I, I really want to know a little bit uh, about you, about your business, and how do you see the future of small entrepreneurs like you um, that had an idea? Some years ago, it was impossible because you did not have the distribution channel, so it was impossible for you to to sell your product right but now suddenly uh even if you are in portuguese you have an english shop and and, and a portuguese shop and you, you you basically can reach the entire world right so tell me a little bit about how do you see your business growing even without having any proper physical shop at the moment i i really really want to 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 hear your your opinion on this Yes, you, 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 t you talked about one of the main advantages of uh, digital is that you, you can sell worldwide. And <laughs> this is really amazing because um, to sell worldwide in the physical world, you would have to, to, to sell to so many retailers. Uh, it would be really uh, difficult to, to manage. and. Um, it wouldn't be fast. So 
digital has this main advantage that you you can sell on worldwide and um and you control I mean, and you control the traffic right yeah. so you don't need someone in the middle so that you can reach customers right in the, yes. in, the, in the very traditional in the very traditional world you need to depend always on the big supermarkets to distribute on the retailers to the retailers to distribute your products now with your own web shop and with the proper content uh, uh, strategy you can reach people all over the world in china if needed and you can reach them directly without any middleman that's that, that's fantastic for small business like yours Yes, I can sell directly to consumers and I am able to know who my customers are. This is a huge advantage because when you have, uh, when you sell to a retailer, you don't know who's buying your products. Um, so when you know exactly who are your customers, you can personalize their digital journey to better serve their needs. And this is really interesting. Um, I know if a, if a consumer is really engaged with my brand and ready to buy, or if he was just curious and uh, is not yet prepared to buy. So I, I can create uh, different journeys uh, for different moments, for different customers, um, because I control the journey of my customers end to end. And I think this is a unique opportunity. It's, it's really, really interesting. Um, also, another advantage is that you completely control the price and the promotion. Uh, yeah, you are, not squeezed. you are not squeezed because most of the times the, the big retailers tries to squeeze you a lot the margin, right? And then, yes, and the competition is huge because you are in, in, in the national with the several other brands and there's a huge competition. So for big brands, it's really great because they have a lot of products. So they, they, they can spend a lot of money on marketing and on, on promotion. But for a, a small brand, it's really difficult to compete in, in, in this kind of point of sales. Uh, like our supermarkets or organic stores. So I'm not a fan of low price and constant promotional activity. So I prefer uh, to sell online where I control my customer journey and where I can uh, define what are the most interesting triggers to, to make him buy. And I don't think Price and promotion are always the good solution. You can offer a lot of other things that customers value. So I really like to sell online. I also have to be uh, present in, in physical points of sales because it's still important. For, but, purpose. Um, for, for trust purpose, most probably. Yes, yes. And also for positioning. But um, I, I would like to, to, to grow a lot online and to make it my main business uh, stream. But that's interesting because if you think about, right, so some of you think about, I, I, I have this crazy idea that I share with some of my friends and sometimes here in the show. Um, Portugal, for, for many years, so many people were, the, this, this Portuguese mindset, oh, we are so small, we don't have a market. We are so small, we don't have a market. But now with the digital age, I think this, this, this is our opportunity because uh, y y you can sell worldwide, right? So you can be based in Portugal, but the digital world offers you uh, a, a global worldwide market. And with a proper strategy, you can, you can really reach anyone you want, right? You have tools like Facebook, Facebook, a lot of people have um, big concerns about data, and I agree. But Facebook for marketeers and for business like ours, it's it's a goldmine, right? Because we can really target people all over the world that we know exactly if they like healthy food or if they don't like healthy food. From some probably that probably someone that likes McDonald's is not really concerned in eating healthy. So most probably the persons that like 
the page in Facebook of McDonald's. We don't need to care with them, but it's like a, a gold mine for us, for, for, for companies, companies like yours. And, and if you think about it, uh, what, what I like on you and on your business in, and I was discussing is, is how easy as well to test new ideas, right? So you yes. can, you can simply put products in the, in the online world that are not even ready or they are not even being produced just to test how is interesting for the market. And I think this, this, this is for me one of the big advantages as well is the speed how we can test new products even without having them um, ready. In the traditional world, you would need to have already a, a cereal or whatever, something that people could taste, right? And, and, and that is already, uh, when you are reach that stage, you have already spent a lot of time producing the or trying to produce a prototype of, of a new product. While in the, in the digital, it's it's something unbelievable. So, what what is what, what is from your point of view one of the biggest challenges that you are having as a as a as a small business? So, you have the digital world. The digital world is opening the doors for you, but it's not only advantage, right? So, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that you are struggling as well um, being a small business in digital world. So, what do you say that would be one of the biggest, toughest uh, problems that you might have uh, as a small owner um, on the, on the digital era. Uh, I think the, the in my case, selling uh, food products, um, the biggest challenge is to comply with all the different rules in the different uh -huh. countries. Because, uh, for instance, organic certification is different uh, in, in several countries. And so there are a lot of, of different rules and uh, it's really difficult to, to know every rule and to comply um, with, with all of them. Uh, so this is one big problem. The other one is, is to, to have... Uh, enough money to spend on, on marketing, on both uh, organic and, and paid um, marketing to, to be able to generate enough leads um, to, to have a, a great uh, business revenue. Uh, and, uh, okay, so to close, to close the show, uh, I would like to ask the the two main topics that I, I so it's like kind of my favorite part of the show because it's the, the advice that my guest has to offer to, to the audience. So the first question is uh, what was the biggest what was the biggest uh, lesson that you got in your career as a leader and what is your advice for leaders that are starting um, the career? right now in, in, in their leadership position. So what, what would be the advice that you have for them? So I, I think that the biggest lesson uh, uh, I received during my, my career was that excelling at what you do is not enough. Having a good product, having a good team, uh, this is not enough. Relationships are everything. And... Um, Love it. If, if we, we are not able to, to create a valuable network, um, it will be very difficult to have a good business. Um, Love it. So in some traditional companies, the most successful workers are those whose work is average, but they excel in relationship management. And this is true in... In a lot of uh, areas, mm -hmm. if you are a business owner or a freelancer, you also have to deal with clients, with tough suppliers. So building a good network for me is the most important asset. When you start a business, you don't have a lot of money to, to, to buy services. Yep. But if you have a good network, you have a lot of people who, who, who will be able to help you. Yes. 
Um, so it, it happened with me when I began Nolita. So I think this is really, really important. Uh, being alone, doing a next one job, it isn't enough. Um, you you have to have a network. You know, network, and I, I want to add more network and the uh, and the uh, uh, very good social skill. Uh, it, it it to 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 nurture that to nurture that network. Because I I always give this example. I remember from my people, my friends. I even had a discussion with a colleague of mine this this week. It was very interesting. He called me, and we went for lunch, and he was even telling me. But another day, I was going through my LinkedIn network, and I was checking who was the most successful people that I had on my LinkedIn. And and um, and uh, I was trying to analyze how were they during our uh, student times, and he was telling me it was very interesting. Say, you know what? The people that were the biggest drunks in the university are the ones <laughs> that are the most successful people nowadays because they have the capability to socialize and to make exactly what you said to to create a network around them. Very social people, very empathic, and, and 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 yeah, so social. So they were able to create the, that network. And today, he was really analyzing his profile and he was checking that the most successful people are the ones that had the best network. It was really, really interesting. What what you say? Good. And what is the advice? So building a network is your big, biggest lesson learned, let's say. But uh, and it can be seen as a, as an advice as well. But if if people are starting now, so I would like another another tip from you. If they are starting now their career, what is your uh, advice for them? What what should they they do as a young leaders? Uh, I, honestly, uh, I have to say that being a, a leader, a CEO, a business owner is so lonely, so lonely. So don't try to do it alone. Uh, find the right people to help you build your vision. I think team is everything. Uh, hiring people that think in a different way is also key because we tend to hire people that are um, the same. like mind minded and I think he, diversity is the we key. We don't challenge ourselves like that. Yeah, diversity <laughs> so, is the key. Hiring different kind of people um, and letting them express their ideas and implement some of them, it's really important. Uh, the results might surprise you <laughs> if you do it. Um, don't, don't be afraid to be challenged. Uh, I think it's, uh, when, when we are a leader, we, we have a big ego. Uh, and we, we don't uh, like to be challenged because we see it as a, we see it as something that is not good. Uh, but I think it's very important. And uh, when we are challenged, we grow as a professional and we do a better job. Um, so yeah, I would advise it: don't I... do this journey alone. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, I kept the, the phrase, it's a very lonely job to be a, a leader. And uh, <laughs> higher you go in the career, lonelier you will be. That That is yes. for sure. Um, so I, 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 I love that advice. Make sure that you don't do it alone because it's it's a very lonely and you, you will never be able to do a proper job if you are alone by yourself because you will never be able to think about everything that you need to think without um, without screwing up. So, yeah. Fernanda, thank you so much. It was super, super, super nice to have you here. Uh, always a pleasure to talk with you, especially now on the episode. Like I said, today was the number 13, so I, sh I hope that was a, a lucky one. So people <laughs> that, that listen to this one, it's, a, it's a, a lucky number for most of it, for most of the people. So thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Um, like I always say, I will leave your LinkedIn profile in the show notes so that people want to know more about you and, and Nolita so they can contact you. Um, and yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. I wish you all the best for, for you and, and Nolita. Thank you so much, Luis. It was a really great pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. 
Thanks for listening to the Adapt Podcast. Head on over to www.adaptmethodology.com slash scorecard to benchmark your ability as a leader to adapt your entire organization to the digital era. You will be able to identify plenty of opportunities for leveraged growth. 